Hey, this is Phil at lovequicksilver.com. It's almost the new year, so in the spirit of renewal, in no way connected with the fact that I just got a new MacBook Air, I decided to do a screencast on installing Quicksilver, some of its basic functions, and some tips to get the best out of the program. So first thing we need to do is head over to qsapp.com and download the latest version of the program. Go to Downloads and open the DMG. And drag the application to the Applications folder. Find the program and launch it. Now you should see the setup screen. A little bit of uh, introduction there, what Quicksilver does. We'll ignore that for now. First important page is the plugins page. Now, plugins add a lot of functionality to Quicksilver. I recommend installing all of these, even if you don't use all of these programs, they're ready and waiting if you ever start to use them. It'll take a few seconds to install. Some of them require a relaunch, we'll do that shortly. Next up is the activation section. This is where you set a hotkey for Quicksilver. It's always control space, but I find that a little bit awkward on a MacBook keyboard, so I'm going to change that to command space. Now, command space is the default for spotlight, but I've already changed that in system preferences to control space so they don't clash with each other. Next is the catalog update time. By default, it's every 10 minutes. You can set it to longer, but I find that's a good uh, time for Quicksilver. Um, if you're regularly adding objects to the catalog, you want it to be as updated as possible. If 10 minutes is too slow for you, you can always activate Quicksilver and hit Command R to get the latest objects. A little bit about how Quicksilver works. And a support page. Now, these links used to be broken. They'd often take you to dead web pages, but they've been updated recently, so they do actually take you to the wiki, the forums, and GitHub issue tracker. Hit finish, and you should see the Quicksilver interface window. Now, there's not much to go on here, just two panes. You can move between them with a tab key. Now, pane one is where you find the objects in Quicksilver, things that you want to act on. And pane 2 is where you find actions, things you use to act upon the objects in pane 1. Now many people describe Quicksilver as an application launcher. And while this is true, it really doesn't do the program justice. It does so much more than that. Well, let's start with some of the basic functions. Now, first. It is an application launcher. If I type some letters of an application, for example, address book, I type AD. See, address book comes in pane one. And in pane two, default action is open. If we hit the down arrow, we can see there's more actions there that we can use on the address book. But now we're going to use the default. Hit enter. And address book opens for you. Invoke Quicksilver again. Another function of Quicksilver is the ability to type text. If we hit the period key, pane one becomes a text entry field. I type some text. And you see the default action has changed because Quicksilver recognizes that hello is not an application and it gives us a text based action, which in this case is large type. No need to type to pane two if I just hit enter. And you see the text comes up in large type on. Uh, 
the MacBook screen. Hit period again, start to type. Now QSApp is a text object, but if we add .com, Quicksilver recognizes that it's a URL and gives us the default action for URLs, which happens to be open URL. I'm going to add the wiki page to that uh, URL and open that, press enter. And sure enough, uh, the wiki page opens in default browser. Now there's many more things you can do with Quicksilver. In a moment, I'm going to show you some quick tips on how to improve Quicksilver's performance and make it easier to use.